But at the edge of the planet, the vacuum of space is a constant minus 450 degrees, almost two and a half thousand degrees colder. The surface rock could not stay molten for long. It's cooling from the outside in. So from the outside begins to crust over and you get this little scab like on a wound of cooled rock, but still really hot, and then gradually begins to cool from the outside in. In less than a million years, Earth's surface was covered in a thin crust. But volcanoes still spewed out lava and choking gases. Meteorites rained down in a constant bombardment. Earth had a long way to go before it could support continents, oceans, and life. Scientists investigating the earliest origins of the Earth have uncovered evidence from salt grains in space. They reveal that the Earth began to form when fragments of the solar dust clouds stuck together. The Earth's internal layers provide the clue that soon after it formed, the young planet completely melted. Scientists had worked out how the Earth first formed from a cloud of dust in space, but they were missing a vital piece of the puzzle. They still did not know the age of the Earth. Billions of years before humans evolved, tiny mineral grains in space clumped together to form the molten ball that became the Earth. But exactly when that happened is a question that has taxed the minds of scholars and scientists for centuries. In 1650, the Irish Archbishop James Usher added up the ages of all the prophets and kings in the Bible. His calculations led him to very precise conclusions. That Earth was created at nightfall before Sunday, October 23rd, 4004 BC. A century later, geologists realized that Earth's thick layers of sediments and volcanic lavas must have been laid down over millions rather than thousands of years. The next breakthrough came in 1897 when physicist Ernest Rutherford figured out that measuring radioactive decay could accurately date the age of rocks. Rock samples from around the globe were found to be not just millions, but billions of years old. But in their hunt for the age of the Earth, scientists hit a major obstacle. Rocks from the earliest stages in Earth history are very hard to find. If you want to go back as a geologist and try to find evidence of those early days, it's very hard to do on the Earth because, of course, we have rain eroding, we have tectonics and continental drift destroying continental surfaces. We simply can't find the rocks that go back to that age. In the early 1950s, the American geologist C.C. Patterson tried a new approach, using meteorites. He knew that meteorites must have clumped together from the same mineral grains in space that formed the Earth. And that happened at the same time as the Earth was born. So if he could date a meteorite, he should get the true age of the Earth. In 1953, Patterson came to Meteor Crater in Arizona, looking for samples. The meteorite which blasted out this enormous crater was about 50 yards across. It slammed into the Earth at a fantastic speed. Objects hitting the Earth from space may typically come in at 10 or 15 miles per second, hitting the ground, penetrating into the ground generating an enormous pressure and shock wave and creating a huge explosion. The meteorite hit the Earth with the force of a two megaton atomic bomb. The explosion vaporized most of the meteorite, but individual fragments survived. This is one of the pieces of the object that crashed into the Earth and made this crater. This is pure iron. 
We know it's iron because, for example, it's magnetic. An amazing piece of something that's floating in space. This was the kind of place that people could get samples for the first radiometric dating of meteorites. And so Patterson came here and got samples like this. Patterson dated the samples and was amazed by the results. The meteorite was a staggering 4.5 billion years old, meaning that the Earth was also born 4.5 billion years ago. Patterson had solved the problem that had defeated scientists for centuries. There's this apocryphal story that Patterson got so excited about the date that was coming back from the laboratory and so hyper about it, he thought he was having a heart attack. And he was driven to the hospital, and it turned out to be just his excitement over this fantastic discovery. Modern radiometric dating techniques have refined the age of the Earth to a remarkable degree of accuracy. The most recent study dates the Earth as 4,567,000,000 years old. So scientists now knew how and when the Earth was formed. But nobody had figured out what happened next. Then in 1974, a radical new theory emerged. In the early solar system, there were dozens of mini planets chaotically orbiting the sun. According to the theory, one of these was on a collision course with Earth. The idea was the brainchild of Bill Hartman, who was trying to explain the origin not of the Earth, but of the Moon. What we came up with was that maybe during that period of intense impacts, maybe very large impact hit the Earth and blew some crustal outer mantle rock off of the Earth into space around the Earth, and the moon formed from that material. Hartman suggested that another planet, about the size of Mars, crashed into the Earth. He claimed that the moon could have been formed by debris from that collision. For many scientists, this was nothing but fantasy, but Hartman had evidence. Collected from the moon itself. I fall in the, in the plum crater getting this rock. Footage from the Apollo 16 mission in April 1972 shows astronaut Charles Duke struggling to pick up a large sample of moon rock to bring back to Earth for geologists to analyze. That's 20 pounds of rock! At the Johnson Space Center in Houston, this actual piece of moon rock is still kept under strict laboratory conditions. I would say, behold the moon. This is an actual piece of the moon, and it's the largest single rock that they brought back from the surface of the moon when the Apollo astronauts went there. We can't touch it. They don't want human beings touching these rocks and leaving organic material on them. Until the late 1960s, geologists thought that the moon formed in the same way as the Earth, by clumps of mineral grains sticking together in the solar dust cloud. They believed it had layers, like the Earth, and a heavy iron core. But when geologists analyzed lunar samples, they were astonished to discover that the moon rocks contained much less iron than they expected. One of the mysteries has always been, why isn't there as much iron in the moon as there is on the Earth, if the two, two objects are right close together in space? The question bothered Hartman so much that he began to think that conventional theories about how the moon formed might be wrong. That lack of iron in the moon, or to put it another way, the fact that the moon is made out of rock that looks like the crust and the upper mantle material of the Earth, that was a clue that the moon may have formed from rocks from the outer portion of the Earth. This was the key to Hartman's idea of a collision between Earth and another planet. The force of the impact completely destroyed the other planet, 
and flung billions